All right, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from Revolution Brewing, and they are out of Chicago, Illinois, and this is their Strawberry Jacket, and this is a part of their Deep Wood series, and this is the 2021 release. So on the front of the label, they are calling this one a, a barley wine ale with strawberries, and on the side of the label, it says Barley Wine Ale Asian Bourbon Barrels with a strawberry. It comes in at 14.2% alcohol by volume. No IBUs listed in time of review. This can is just over one year old. I want to give a huge thanks. Shout out once again to a very good friend of mine and a viewer of the channel, Stephen, for hooking me up with this one. So big thanks to him for this beer in the description box. I'll post a link to the beer haul video I did that contains all the goodies he hooked me up with. And, uh, I am reviewing the last beer from that haul. I posted that haul like probably like three or four months ago. Now I think it was back in March. So I'll uh, finally get into the last one here and uh, hopefully I save the best for last. So Strawberry Jacket. Now I will say this, when it comes to Revolution's uh, Barrel Age program, fantastic. I really like their beers. I would have never thought that I would be drinking a barley wine, um, barrel aged barley wine with strawberries. Just sounds weird to me. I just something that... I'd put two and two together and be like, no, that just doesn't sound like uh, something they would do, but they did. It says on the back here, we'll read the little spiel. It says, yes, yeah, strawberry jacket, a slightly drier blend of bourbon and rye whiskey barrel, uh, English barley wines aged 18 months provides a base for, <laughs> for the delicate nuances of fresh strawberry to shine while retaining the same balance we expect of our beloved straight jacket. So yeah. Um, we're here for it. Let's crack this one open. Just over a year old. So I have no idea how this drank fresh. So if you watch this one, you had it fresh or relatively fresh, and I'm having it now over a year old. Maybe it'll be completely different. I don't know. I don't know what to expect from this one. I'm kind of interested, but at the same time, kind of nervous. Um, and just like I always do, I can't pour these beers worth a damn. I just suck at pouring at this point. But uh, we're going to pour it all in that. Wow, that looks really murky and gross. <laughs> just like I love my barley wines, just looking terrible. Yeah, that has that, you know, a little cheat there, but a lot of people will say they want their barley wines to look like that, and I'm one of them. And it just had like, you know, a super murky, just like, it has this weird off brown color from the fresh strawberries. It has almost like this pinkish, almost purplish hue to it. I don't know how it's gonna look on camera. Usually I kind of have an idea, I don't know. Probably like a brownish color, maybe a dark brown, but in per person it has this purple, uh, pink kind of brownish tinge. It just looks weird. Uh, very murky, very turbid. Like I said, definitely had a lot of uh, goodies being poured in there. At the bottom here has a really like light orange kind of color. Had about a half finger of this tannish head that is now dissipated to a thin film. Alcohol legs for days on the side of the glass. Let's get a nose. Now I've had this one in my beer fridge at 52, but I also took it out a little bit before I reviewed this. So this is probably closer to 60 degrees. <sighs> that smells weird. Damn, that smells, that smells odd. It smells really good for about 80% of the aroma. And then the last kind of 20%, the strawberries hit and it's weird. So all the things you want out of a, a blended barrel aged barley wine, right? English style. Tons of, there's caramel, there's toffee, there's molasses, there's butterscotch, a big, rich, deep uh, confectionery, but also burnt sugars. There's uh, dates and raisins and figs, a lot of, a lot of stone, like darker stone fruits. Vanilla, and then I get hit with like this spicy, almost like rye whiskey as opposed to the bourbon. Like it has like a, a spicy kind of rye component to the nose. Yeah, the vanillins, the, uh, you know, the, the oak and the vanilla, definitely big in here. It has a big booziness and a big like barrel heat, as some people would say. Like it has the heat you're kind of getting from the big ABV of the barrel. It's just, yeah, I mean, it's, it's noticeable. Even at over a year old, this has a big barrel presence still. But after all of that, there is this almost fresh, slightly acidic kind of tart strawberry nose. And it's almost like it doesn't belong there. Because it kind of, like in my mind, it kind of doesn't. But it does, because that's what they're going for. But it's really weird. And it's something I haven't really, you know, experienced too often. Like I've had berry characters in English barley wines before, or in barrels, or, you know, big ABV beers, big barrel aged beers. But... I've never had like a fresh, authentic kind of strawberry nose in something like this. But this smells every single um, 
ABV that you you could say that this smells like it's almost 15%. Like the, it, it it's almost like burning my nostrils sniffing it. I tell you, like the barrel heat, it's big. A little bit of like a chocolate too, like a very light like baker's chocolate. Brown sugar as well. Yeah, very super complex. I will say I love the 80% that is the, the base beer. The 20% that's the strawberries, it's kind of weird. I'm not saying it's not going to work on the palate. I'm just saying in the aroma, it's kind of <sighs> taking away from the beer. But we have to taste it. So cheers, everybody. Thanks again to Steve. Wow. I have to eat my words, or I guess in this case, drink my words. That works way better than I thought it was going to, like significantly better than I thought it was going to. That's that's a fucking really unique, interesting, fun, and tasty beer. All of that is this beer. Body in this one is big, but it's not too big. This is like lower to medium full body. It might be a little thin. Maybe it has thinned out with the aging, but it's not It's not full body. It's not 100% full body. It's a little bit thin for something 14.2%. Don't get me wrong. It, it's nice and, and um, thick. It's just not full body, almost approaching 15%. It's a little bit thin. Does it bother me? Not in the least. The mouthfeel, it has this nice, crisp, effervescent kind of feel to it, but it smooths out on the back of the palate. So up front, you get all that spritzy carbonation. But by the end of the, the sip, it smooths out. So body, a bit thin, okay with me. Mouthfeel, damn sour. The taste, this is a super complex, really fun, and dare I say, highly enjoyable beer. What is happening with this beer is really cool the last quarter of the palate. Like it's, it's something that is so different that in a beer like this that it, it actually makes me kind of happy about it so let, let's try to break this down as best as i can you guys know i'm not great at this right at the front all that multi base beer goodness hits me it's again i do i want to run through all of those you know burnt sugars and confectionery sugars not really but caramel toffee brown sugar molasses a little bit of butterscotch all that shit at the front there's an underlying kind of baker's chocolate too that i got later on in the nose but it's there as it continues on through the palate, a little bit of, uh, again, dark stone fruits like plums, dates, um, raisins, not even stone fruits specifically, but just like darker fruits, right, that you typically get in something like this. They're there. There's a little bit of a smokiness too overall, but, but that's what hits me at the front. Midway through the palate is where the barrel hits, and again, there's a barrel heat. It's big. You can you can taste the barrel. This isn't just the, the oak portion of the barrel. Um, this is you know, the leftover spirit that soaked into it, all of that, it has like a rye whiskey kind of spiciness to it. There's vanillas, there are vanillins, I should say, the vanilla and oak. And it's really nice. As the beer starts to dry out after that from the vanillins, like that oak tannin dryness, it dries out the palate to a full-on dryness. This is mildly bitter, but man, is it dry. And it's oak tannin dry for me. That's where the strawberry comes in. The strawberry comes in on the back, and I'm waiting for a big blast of booziness, like in the back of my throat, into my chest, or just like something to kind of grip the palate from a booziness aspect. Again, I said there was barrel heat, but it wasn't super boozy. You're just getting, I shouldn't even call it barrel heat. It's more like an intensity from the barrel, right? The heat or the booze from the actual barrel, the strawberry kind of knocks it away. Like it's going to be boozy, and then the strawberry, you know, pokes its head in, and it's like, hey, I'm here. I'm slightly tart. I'm slightly acidic. It has a fresh strawberry, slightly sweet as well. And what happens is the coolest fucking thing. After it knocks away that booziness and it mixes in with the dryness, I start getting slight essences of like a, if there was such thing as like a bourbon caramel drizzled strawberry. That's kind of what I'm left at the back of the palate. A little bit of a warming in the chest, very minute. This does not drink like 14.2% from the alcohol. Um, I wouldn't guess over 12, honestly, like it hides it extremely well, like maybe even lower. Cause again, the body's a little bit thin. 
And that strawberry does such a great job of uh, kind of knocking away that, that booze that you're... I'm expecting a big blast of booze on the back of the palate and it just never comes. This is really fucking good. And I did not intend... Like, I always say, don't go into reviews of preconceived notions, right? And despite I say saying that in like every couple reviews, I sometimes do because it's just, it's human nature. You look at something like this and you're like, fuck, it's a barrel aged English style barley wine. It's blended with bourbon and rye whiskey. And then they have strawberries in here. And then you, and you're sitting there and you're going, how does this work? Then I get the, to the aroma and I'm like, ah, that doesn't really work. Then I get the taste and I'm like, you're fucking wrong, Joe. You're hundred percent wrong. Cause this does work. I could see, and this seems like it's a cop out for me. Maybe it is, but you know, we're not all going to agree on, you know, there'll be, there's someone's going to come to this review and be like, I don't really care for it. There's somebody else that could come here and say like, that was one of the best fucking revolution, uh, deep wood series beers I've had. It's just going to happen. But I can see both sides of the coin. Like I can see how somebody would not like this at all. That strawberry in the back end, it's kind it is kind of weird. I happen to enjoy it, but I can see how somebody would be like, nah, that just kind of throws the whole beer off. Kind of like I was getting in the nose, but I can see other people being like that works and makes the beer. I'm somewhere in between where I don't absolutely think it's fucking my favorite from Revolution, not, not even close, but it's also not as weird and gross as I thought it might be based on the aroma. Let me go one more sip. We'll lock in a uh, rating and um, talk about price and availability. This is really fucking good. It really is. So Strawberry Jacket, part of their Deep Wood series, the 2021 Vintage. I have no problems giving that a low 4.5 out of 5. I'm going to go 4.4 out of 5. That's where it lands for me. This was fun. Like I said, fun, unique, different, but also fucking tasty. That's where this beer lands. So uh, really, really good beer. Price point availability. I always say this. I don't know if anyone's ever commented, but if you do get Revolution stuff and you've paid for it, what do four packs of their Deep Wood series typically run? Like, is this in the $40 to uh, $40 a four pack range? Because that's what a couple people have told me. $40 a four pack for most of the beers like this. If that's the case, I'd still buy this uh, again because it's such a fun fucking beer. And I would this would be a sharing beer. I'd like to split this with a couple other people and be like, hey, you have three or four ounces of it. See what you think. Uh, I would easily pay 10 bucks for a can of that just for the uniqueness. And uh, availability, wherever you see Re Revolution, you should see some of their Deep Wood series. Not everything. Some of it gets... Just, uh, I think, releases in and around the Chicago area, sometimes just at the brewery. I don't know how far this one made it. I'm really disappointed we don't get Revolution here in the Buffalo, New York area because I'd love to try more of their stuff. Uh, we did get slight distro of their stuff like seven, eight years ago, and it wasn't any of this. It was just like their core offerings. And we haven't seen it since, so I don't know. Um, huge thanks to Stephen for this one. Stephen brought so the haul that I did, and I realize at this point you probably have already clicked off. And if you haven't, post in the comment section like, I don't know. I'd love to try that, Joe. Or, Joe, your palate is horrible. And then, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Just post something to indicate you watch to the end. Because I ramble a lot. I get it. This is probably going to be like a 13 to 15 minute review. But beer like this kind of deserves it. But anyway, um, I was going to say something. And then I just totally forgot. So <laughs> that's that's why I ramble. Anyway, um, I, was, I was talking about the distro from them and how I'd love to try more stuff from them. But, oh, the, the haul from Steven. Um he just brought, he had a bunch of extra stuff when he we, we met up with uh, him and the FLX boys, Dan and Mike. Go check out their channel, great guys. We hung out and he had a bunch of extras. He's like five bucks for whatever you want. Every single can, five dollars. That's, I mean, if this is a $10 can, I got it for five bucks because Steven's a great dude. So uh, I can't thank Steven enough for this one. Anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. Thanks again to Steven. Post in the comments section if you've had this one before. Till the next one, cheers.